I'm going to share my testimony of deliverance, but I want it to actually come into our consciousness and also why I've done things the way that I have. Till this day, there has not been one capital assembly member that has died of COVID till this day. It sounds small because we minimize it. It sounds small because of the hypocrisy of the church. It sounds small because of the way the, the church has decided. And when I say the church, I mean globally and particularly Nigeria. How we have chosen to operate ministry in such a callous and hypocritical way. While I was in hospital, we contacted people we felt were close enough, covenant enough to pray with us. Senior people in ministry around the world, in Nigeria and around the world. Please, this is what is happening to my husband. Please, this is what is happening to our pastor. I couldn't make some of these calls myself. But as a result of those calls, I started getting calls from pastors, apostles, bishops, prophets from all over the world. Black, white, Nigerian, Kenyan, Uganda, South Africa, British. All of them sharing with me how they almost died at the hands of COVID. Each one giving me his own harrowing tale and account of God's faithfulness and how God brought him through. 99% of all of them, nobody knew that anything happened. To, for some, their churches were told pastor went on holiday. For others, pastor went on break. And so on and so forth. I am a pastor. And the cover for many people. So I know the extent to which the disease has ravaged this nation. Forget about statistics and all the numbers. Forget about it. I know when people call to say, Pastor, pray, Pastor, pray, Pastor, pray. I know how many members of this church have been diagnosed positive, but yet God has brought us all through it. God has brought us all through it. That we can say with gratitude in our hearts, that God, not one life, so far till date, not one life has been lost in TCA. Yes! Many are the afflictions of the righteous. That's what the Bible says. Listen, listen to me. Oh. Because we have this fake version of Christianity that we are pushing. If some of these verses were not in scripture, I would understand. We have this version of Christianity where we bury our struggles. We think it's more Christian to say they don't exist. God never promised anybody a Christianity without challenges. A Christianity without attacks. A Christianity without downtimes. What he promised us is that we are overcomers. What he promised us and gave us is the way out of our afflictions. My heart has been bleeding over the years and if you've listened to me closely, you've probably heard me saying this again and again and again. And I want to say to young people very particularly, reject this hypocritical Christianity. Demand authenticity. We preach a faith message that violates itself, the very fundamental, the very fundamental of the faith message is that the just shall live by his faith. Did you hear me? That it is your faith 
that produces the lifting, the protection, the healing in your life. We have access there. Therefore, the Bible says, we have access through faith into this grace, the finished works of Jesus. Everything he has accomplished for us, our access to it is only through faith. And without faith, we are denied access. It's done, it's finished, but without faith, our faith, we can access it. That's the very foundation of the message of faith. You can't sidetrack it, circumvent it. Yes, God does it sovereignly from time to time in so many different ways. But it is meditation, confession, revelation, action, manifestation. The five steps of grace. We have developed a denial Christianity. The message of faith never denies where you are. The message of faith is not asking you to say, I'm not sick. That's where you are. Infirmity has come. That's where you are. The message of faith, you will never find it in scripture where you are admonished to say you are not sick. What you do find in scripture is where you are admonished to say what you want to see, which is, I am healed. And this is a massive error that keeps happening in the church. I'm not sick. I'm not poor. I'm not this. I'm not that. Let the weak say I am strong. Let the sick say I am healed. Not this fake Christianity we have. I can't tell you how many, how many pastors called me and yet nobody knows they almost died because they went on holiday they are defending their God they are defending their message any message you have to defend has Caleb the Bible gives us a model shows us God never hid never attempted to hide the afflictions that his saints went through whether old testament or new paul the apostle on the island when the shipwrecked shipwreck could have fitted that out no we shall not crash we shall not this we shall not that but shipwrecked yet when a snake bit him and fastened itself to his hand he wasn't shaking, he wasn't sweating. He, the Bible says he shook it off. Yet the same Paul would speak openly about his infirmity. Yet the same Paul and these hyper faith teachers have constantly tried to, you know, I did it to weave it. It was talking about mm, the, the opposition that came upon him. But you can't escape the scripture. The next verse will say, I knew that if you could pluck out your own eyes to give me, how does I and uh, a demon buffeting by causing trouble, how, do, how does that align? It doesn't fit. We try to make it fit to make our messages hyper. But the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous. That first night in the hospital, when they connected the oxygen, they started connecting all the tubes and all the machines. That first night, instead of my oxygen levels to go up, it started to go down more and more. So it was, it was a rough night. It was a very rough night. Where you are breathing deliberately. You are shifting positions so that you can breathe and stay alive. You feel dizzy like you're about to pass out. Then I got a call. I had sent a text. Pops, which is what I call him, he has been my pastor in recent years. Pops, pray for me. I'm in the emergency room, hospital isolation unit because of COVID-19. 
just record a voice message because I can't speak now and I would be happy. Instead, the man called. And he stayed with me on the phone for one hour. It wasn't one hour of arrogance. It was one hour of honesty as he began to share with me his own travails and struggles. He would ask me questions, which drug are you on? I would tell him, he would say, yeah, that's what I was placed on at this time, at that time, because of this, because of that. He may not have recognized it. One full hour, it actually must have been about an hour and a half, telling me his weakness, not his strength. Sharing with me the times he almost died and how God brought him through. And when you hear those kinds of details, it doesn't weaken your faith. It actually strengthens it. Because it was listening to him that made me realize that yes, you will make it. Yes, you can make it. You can't imagine how soothing it was when somebody said, doesn't the Bible say with the measure with which you have been comforted. That is where the power of your anointing lies to comfort others also. But we have a Christianity where we make ourselves into superstars. Fake Christianity. I mean, how, how dare you? You preach a gospel that God heals. I cannot be sick. Then you are sick. Then you pretend and lie. And you have the guts and the heart to do that. And we call it Christianity. How do we call ourselves overcomers when there is nothing to overcome? Of a certainty, God can cause you not to see it. Not to feel it, but yet God can allow you to pass through it and deliver you from it. And it's still the same God. But you know what was the turning point for me? I'm sharing my testimony from the hospital. I got a text from Pastor Martha. Dad, I just thought you should know this. Minister Pat and Reverend Foshi's little daughter, Bernice, their help. Nanya Dap Quim. When they heard the call about your recovery and the expense of the hospital bill, they went home and broke their piggy banks of money that they had been guarding jealously for many months. 2,650 naira and 1,000 naira respectively from those two precious children. And they came to our house to give me and said it was for your treatment. That they really want you to get well. It brought tears to my eyes. This is what Pastor Martha wrote. So I thought you should know, sir. You mean so much to all the children and the adults alike. Your life has made a huge impact in our lives. The words from your mouth are constantly shaping us into God's image. We as a church are grateful for the love God has for us by giving us awesome shepherds like you and mom. We are confident that he that began the good work of restoring your health, sir, he will surely finish the work. I cried. And then I stood up and said, I will not die. I said, God, you will honor the faith of those two children. I thank you. I thank you. While I was in the hospital, three people died in the rooms beside mine. 
the woman that was coughing was coughing so earnestly there was a time the coughing got so intense and then suddenly silence then you could hear the doctors and nurses scrambling up and down I understood what had happened these were people that are younger stronger than me it so pleased God that I would be here in all circumstances in all circumstances yes you are you are so good to me in all circumstances in all, in all circumstances the time when distinction has to happen. The things that can be shaken and we need the word right now. More than ever. More than ever.